So God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody that you brought into the church, for everyone you gathered online. And God, may the truths that were shared in the worship pour over us today. God, I thank you for just how you put this message on my heart, how you led me through the preparation process, for the people who gave me feedback. God, may I speak your truth clearly and boldly today. May I not, may I not stumble, and where I do, may you pick up the pieces. God, you are so faithful, and your name is powerful. So let us engage with those truths today through this message. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us today. We believe whether you're here with us in the sanctuary, you watch us online, that God has drawn you here for a reason, and that you are truly blessed by today's message. And the title for today's message is Preparing for Battle. And not only is it a little twist on the word preparing in the context of our series on prayer, but the image on the slide evokes some of my favorite memories from the movie Gladiator, where the main character, a general named Maximus, rubs his hands in the dirt before picking up his sword and engaging in battle. And we are indeed in the midst of a battle, even if we're not always aware of it. Though in 2020, eh, it's... Before we get into that, though, I wanted to talk a little bit about the spark that led me to preach today's message. The day was August 15th of this year, which is actually Dan's birthday. And while he was celebrating with cake and with family, I was engaging in an activity that I found myself doing a lot these days. Checking Twitter, checking the feeds of some individuals whose opinions I generally value in order to help me try and learn more about the things that are happening in the world, try and unpack them and, 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 and put them into context. And on this particular day, one of the individuals I read on a regular basis, he held what's known as an AMA, okay? And if you don't know what those are, it stands for Ask Me Anything. And someone asked this individual a question. I think many of us are asking these days, what in the world is going on? And I don't think it's too hard to imagine where this question came from, given the, the, the unrest, the, the division, the violence, the destruction we're seeing and hearing about in our culture and across the world. Also, in case you didn't, uh, in case you hadn't heard, we happen to be mired in the midst of a global pandemic. Businesses and churches, they're doing all they can to try and stay open. People are suffering economically. We don't know who to trust. It's hard to get information. It's coming at us so fast. We don't know what's right, what's wrong. But one thing that we can count on, it's still happening. We watch it on, on TV. We watch it in social media. And I don't know about the rest of you, but it certainly feels like we're living in some trying and unprecedented times. But I don't want to camp too long on things that we know already. And perhaps if you're like me, we dwell a little too much on. Instead, I want to get to the response that was posted to the question, which went something like this. If you understand that God is real, and so too is the devil, and that good and evil will manifest themselves in people, then the world has never made more sense in my entire lifetime. When I read that response, I was immediately taken back to my gamer days. Well, I can't help that. Like I'm younger, okay? Uh, there's this game that I used to play. And it was called Diablo. And embedded in the story of the game is the notion that there's these, these lords, these capital L lords, who specialize in some aspect of human suffering, all working in concert to bring misery to the fictional world you need to save. And you've got to level up your hero. And it turns out that two of the most powerful of those beings in the game are the Lord of Destruction and the Lord of Hatred. But that's just a game, right? 
Or is this an example of where art is imitating reality? Because as I look at the world, themes of hatred and destruction look awfully familiar. Now there's this time in my life where I perhaps would have called out such thinking as being superstitious or paranoid, but that's because I actually hadn't read what the Bible says about spiritual forces, evil ones acting on the earth. It's amazing what happens when you read it, you discover things. But encounters with those evil spiritual forces are all over the place. And here are a few example passages. And we're going to start with the Old Testament. The first is from 1 Samuel 16, verse 14, which says, Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Another example appears in Daniel 10, one of Dan's favorite passages, which describes the struggle an angel had in coming to minister to the prophet Daniel. Then he, the angel, continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. And then we come to the life of Jesus, where several times he deals directly with the demonic realm. And we don't have time to read all the passages, but here's a list of them on the slide. What I want to highlight, however, is the Luke 8 passage, where Jesus rebukes a demon named Legion, who earned his name because there were many pointing to the idea that this stuff may be, may be a little more common than we might think. Regardless, we can't deny that the Gospels record repeated encounters with evil super, supernatural entities, suggesting that we live in a world that's been invaded, in fact, by enemy forces. Author C.S. Lewis put it this way in his book, Mere Christianity. One of the things that surprised me when I first read the New Testament seriously and the Old Testament, was that it talks so much about a dark power in the universe, a mighty evil spirit who was held to be the power behind death and disease and sin. Christianity agrees with dualism that this universe is at war, but it does not think this is a war between independent powers. It thinks that it is a civil war, a rebellion, and that we are living in a part of the universe occupied by the rebel. Enemy-occupied territory, that's what this world is. Now, something you may not know about mere Christianity is that while it came out in 1952, it was preceded by a series of regular 15-minute talks C.S. Lewis gave called The Right and Wrong, or Right and Wrong, A Clue to the Meaning of the Universe, and What Christians Believe. Lewis actually gave these talks during the darkest days of World War II. And he did it as a way to help people understand why the world around them was literally being torn apart. Lewis understood the truth, and he conveyed it as best as he could. And in doing so, he put the blame squarely where it belonged. Now, understanding that we are living in enemy-occupied territory might help us make sense of the world we see, but I personally find that to be a little of little comfort as we race through the remaining weeks and months of 2020. We have an election coming up that's already stirring up a lot of hostility. Though, thankfully, we're starting a new series next week that is designed to help us through some of that. Very timely. We also have the potential for a second wave of coronavirus looming over our heads, And violence and unrest in several major cities is at record levels. In other words, I think we need to hang on our hats a little bit longer. Because 2020 may still have some surprises yet in store. That leads me to a key question, though, which is on this slide. How should we respond in times like this? What I mean by this is that as believers and as followers of Jesus, we are called to a higher standard, one where we do battle against the forces of evil according to the rules of the kingdom of God and not the ways of the world. I'm not saying, by the way, that we need to be passive in this fight. Far from that. 
Jesus has actually given us very specific instructions for how we are to engage the world in Matthew 5, where he says quite a few things that are pretty countercultural. There are a couple of verses that I feel are particularly relevant for the world we're encountering today. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Now, here's the problem. If you're anything like me, it's really hard to do that when you're being assaulted from every angle by what's going on in the world right now. I know I'm affected by it in many ways, and I'm sure you are too. There are days where I find it very difficult to sleep. I get angry at some of the things I see and hear on TV, I find myself in arguments that I don't, I don't want to be in with friends, with loved ones. There's a heaviness. And I feel it physically in my mind, my body, and my spirit. And because of this, the strength that I need to draw on to do what Jesus is telling me to do sometimes just isn't there. I call this the battle before the battle. And it's the battle I feel we need to win within ourselves before we can engage the world in the ways that Jesus wants us to do it. In past sermons, Dan has used the metaphor of, of putting on our spiritual oxygen masks first before trying to do anything else. And I think that advice makes a lot of sense in this context. Tony also touched on this idea last week when he talked about the importance of renewing our minds and getting rid of all the junk and the clutter in our lives. The question is, how? In other words, how can we put ourselves in a posture to get rid of the junk and the heaviness the world puts on us and in tune with how God wants us to pray for the world and treat our enemies? The Apostle Paul actually provides some guidance to address this exact scenario in Ephesians 6, where he says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the, evil, or against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And I want you to notice something about this passage. Paul is fully aware of the spiritual battle. He acknowledges the realities that we talked about up front and that there are evil beings out there trying to create havoc across our world. But he also says the key to winning for us is to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power and to put on the full armor of God. However, some of you may see a, a few issues with Paul's advice. I, it sounds great. But if Paul were in front of me right now, I think I'd be asking for a little more detail. You know what I mean? Like, how do I put on a, spe a, a, a suit of armor that was kind of meant to be a metaphor, Paul? How do I do that? So I'm thankful that the team at Wild Heart, at Heart Ministries, this is John Eldridge's uh, ministry, by the way, if you don't know. Wonderful team and a wonderful ministry. They put together a terrific prayer that I think captures the spirit of what Paul is trying to say quite well. And the prayer is actually contained in your pastor's pick, um, and it's a book called, by John called Get Your Life Back. He actually just wrote it this, this, this year, and I love the subtext on this, Everyday Practices for a World Gone Mad. If you don't believe in prophecy, like understand like he released that before all this happened. The Wild at Heart team also makes that prayer available on their website for free at wildatheart.org slash pray. The link's in your program, so you don't have to write that down. But I encourage you to take a look at it. So the prayer that's in the book is called the Daily Prayer. And is is God's way. It came to my life at a, the exact perfect time. And I've used it often during times of struggle to help me get off my feet and working in the right direction again. It's actually based in part on Ephesians 6, which we just read, but also goes beyond Ephesians 6 and invokes the promises of God that were made 
through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. In a few minutes, we're actually going to work through the daily prayer together as an equipping exercise. But before we do, there's a little pre-work we need to do in the form of a couple of action steps. And the first is, is that I want you to write down or commit to memory anything that you are feeling that you don't feel is from God. All right? So if the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, the fruit of the kingdom of darkness might be things like apathy, depression, anxiety, being short-tempered, jealousy, hatred, idolatry, sarcasm, rage. Maybe you're dealing with issues of fear or self-worth. These are just a few ideas, but I'm going to pause for a few minutes so you can think about this and let a few ideas come to mind. And if you're truly not struggling with anything, praise Jesus, first of all. But second, I would invite you to pray on behalf of somebody who you know is struggling because we all have those people, right? But now let's take a few moments and press into some things we're struggling with. The next action step is related to the first one. It's a little more external, I'll say. And I realize that might be a little confusing, so let me explain what I mean by that. So maybe you had a couple of things from the previous action step. One or two of them might be more intense, or you might feel under, uh, under attack by them. For example, I mentioned earlier, like I feel like our world is under assault by hatred and destruction right now. Perhaps that's something that you're feeling internally. Or maybe you're like me, and you struggle with issues of self-worth. There's this little voice on your shoulder constantly telling you things like, you're not good enough. Why would it, anyone listen to you? You're useless. And you don't matter. No one would miss you if you were gone. It's possible that that little voice you're hearing is one of the devil's minions trying to get you to agree with them about your own self-worth. The key is to recognize this as an accusation and how you can tell is that it's often in the second person. It's directed at you. Not I or he or she or they. You. So you're not good enough in some area. Or you'll never be free of a particular issue. And so on. Whatever might be lurking around, though, let's take a few moments and name those things. And again, if you're not feeling under attack by anything, feel free to pray on behalf of someone who is. But let's now take a few moments and let's press into that. The last action step I have for you is to create a list of individuals who the devil may be using to try and derail you. This could be friends, it could be relatives, it could be acquaintances, who it just doesn't feel safe to talk to. Like when you talk to them, you're exhausted. Or you feel slimed by the conversation that you have. Maybe it's a person who just brings out the worst in you. Maybe you avoid them or talking about difficult topics with them. Maybe there's a hurt there that needs forgiveness. Now, it's important to realize that our fight is not necessarily with these individuals. Paul makes that very clear in the passage we just read. But the thing about spiritual battles is like the ones that happen in the physical world. There can be collateral damage. And it's important that we be aware of this possibility and not get caught up in it ourselves. So let's take a few moments to think about anyone you know who might fit the description I just went through. And then we'll take the next step. So what we're going to do now 
is use the power of words and enter into an extended time of prayer. About 15 minutes or so, believe it or not. And I realize that this is not something we've done before on a Sunday, but in talking with Dan, we both felt like taking this step would be really beneficial for our church family. And besides, you guys like new things, right? <laughs> but before we enter into it, I just want to talk a little bit about how that's going to work. So first, we invite you to put yourself into a prayer posture that works best for you. If that's on your knees, if that's standing up, if that's sitting down, go for it. We just ask that you be respectful to those around you and maintain social distancing guidelines. For those of you who are watching us online at home or otherwise, if you want to lay down or jump into a comfy chair, I've got one at home that's inviting me right after this. If you want to jump into that as I pray, now's the time to do that. Second, I'm going to pray a modified version of the daily prayer from the Wild at Heart team over all of you. As I mentioned, the original version of the prayer is available both in your pastor's pick and at the link that's, on your that's in your program. And I encourage all of you to grab a copy and keep it close by so that you can pray this prayer on your own. It will help you get the weight of spiritual oppression off your back whenever you need to. I'm telling you, I've used it over and over again. And you should also feel free, by the way, to tailor it to your own life and your own circumstances how you see fit. Third, you will have the opportunity to pray about the things that came up while we're doing action steps and deal with them today, like right now today. This will take place in three pauses. In the first, you will address the things that came up in the first action step. In the second pause, you will address the things that came up in the second step, and then so and so on. When we get to those pauses, you may say the things that came up, either out loud or keep them silent as you feel led. All we, ask, all we ask is that you be mindful of those around you. Lastly, we just invite you to be hyper aware of what God might be saying to you or wanting you to do why I pray. So if he says to say, amen, go with it. If there's someone you need to forgive, then give it to God and let his peace flow into you. If you feel like he's putting a scripture in your heart, write it down. If there's a matter of the heart he's inviting you to heal, then let him. Or maybe the truths and the words of the prayer move you emotionally. Embrace that as part of your journey. So once again, we don't have a typical sermon today. But when again, then again, when you've had a typical sermon, always up here. So let's get into a posture to receive from our good, good Father. And as I pr pray these words, you should feel the freedom to engage with them. Don't be passive, and may you have great expectations as we engage in this prayer as a church. I'll give us a few moments to get settled, and then we'll, I will start. Our dear Lord Jesus, we come to you now to be restored in you, to be renewed in you, and to receive from you all the grace and mercy we so desperately need this day. We honor you as our sovereign Lord, and we surrender every aspect and dimension of our lives totally and completely to you. We give to you our spirits, souls, and bodies, our hearts, minds, and wills. We cover ourselves with your blood that you shed for us on the cross our spirits, souls, and bodies, our hearts, minds, and wills. We ask your Holy Spirit to restore us in you, renew us in you, and lead us through this time of prayer. In all that we now pray, we stand in absolute agreement with your spirit and with our intercessors and allies, by your spirit and by your spirit alone. Dearest God, holy and victorious Trinity, you alone are worthy of all of our worship, our heart's devotion, all our praise, all our trust, and all the glory of our lives. We love you, we worship you, and we give ourselves over to you in our heart's search for life. 
You alone are life and you have become life within each of us. We renounce all other gods, every idol, and we give to you the place in our hearts and in our lives that you truly deserve. This is all about you, God, and not about us. You are the hero of this story and we belong to you as your children. We ask your forgiveness for our every sin. We renounce our sins. We ask you to search us and know us and reveal to us where you are working in our lives, granting to us the the grace of your healing, deliverance, your holiness, and a deep and true repentance. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us and choosing us before you made the world. You are our true Father, our creator, redeemer, sustainer, and the true end of all things, including our lives. We love you, we trust you, and we worship you. We give ourselves over to you, Father, to be one with you in everything as Jesus is one with you. Thank you for proving your love by sending Jesus. We receive him and all his life and all his work, which you ordain for us. Thank you for including each of us in Christ, for forgiving us our sins, for granting us his righteousness, for making us complete in him. Thank you for making us alive with Christ, raising us with him, seating us with him at your right hand, establishing us in his authority and anointing us with your love, your spirit and your kingdom. We receive it with sincere and grateful hearts and give it total claim to our spirits, souls, and bodies, our hearts, minds, and wills. We bring the life and work of the Lord Jesus Christ over our lives today, over our homes, our families, our households, throughout our kingdoms, domains, and places of influence. Jesus, thank you for coming to ransom us with your own life. We love you, we worship you, we give ourselves over to you to be one with you in all things our spirits, souls, and bodies, hearts, minds, and wills. We sincerely receive all the work and triumph in your cross, death, blood, and sacrifice through which our every sin is atoned for. We are ransomed and delivered from the kingdom of darkness and transferred to your kingdom. Our sin nature is removed. Our hearts are circumcised unto God and every claim and accusation being made against us is disarmed this day. We now take our place in your cross and death, dying with you to sin, to our flesh, to this world, to the evil one in his kingdom. We take up the cross and crucify our flesh with all its pride, arrogance, unbelief, idolatry, and anything we name as struggles in our hearts right now. Jesus, through you, we put off the old man. Apply to us all the work in your cross, death, blood, and sacrifice. We receive it with sincere and grateful hearts and give it total claim to our spirits, souls, and bodies, our hearts, minds, and wills. We bring the blood and sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ over our lives today, over our homes, our families, our households, our vehicles, finances all of our kingdoms, domains, and places of influence. We bring, the bl- we bring the cross, death, blood, and sacrifice of Jesus Christ against Satan, against Satan's kingdom, against every foul and unclean spirit, every foul power and black art, against every witch, and against every human being and their spirit, their warfare, and household. We bring the cross, death, blood and sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ to the borders of our kingdoms and domains, and we stake it there in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we also sincerely receive you as our source of life, and we receive all the work and triumph in your resurrection through which you have conquered sin, death, judgment, and the evil one. Death has no power over you, nor does any foul thing. And we have been raised with you to live a new life, to live your life, one that is dead to sin and fully alive to God. We take our place now in your resurrection and in your life, and we give our lives to you to live your life. We are saved by your life. We reign in life through your life. We receive your hope, love, faith, joy, your goodness, trueness, wisdom, power, and strength. Apply to us all the work and triumph in your resurrection, and we receive it with sincere and grateful hearts. 
we give it total claim to our spirits, souls, and bodies, our hearts, minds, and wills. We bring the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ over our lives today, over our homes, our families, our households, our vehicles, finances, over all of our kingdoms, domains, and places of influence. We bring the resurrection in the empty tomb of Jesus Christ against Satan, against Satan's kingdom, against every foul and unclean spirit, every foul power and black art, against every witch and against every human being and their spirit, their warfare and household. We bring the resurrection in the empty tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ to the borders of our kingdoms and domains, and we stake them there in Jesus' name. Jesus, we also sincerely receive you as our authority, rule, and dominion, our everlasting victory against Satan and his kingdom, and our ability to bring your kingdom at all times and in every way. We receive all the work and triumph in your ascension, through which Satan has been judged and cast down. And all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. All authority in the heavens and on this earth has been given to you, Jesus. And you are worthy to receive all glory and honor, power and dominion, now and forever. We take our place in, in your authority and in your throne through which we have been raised with you to the right hand of the Father and established in your authority. We give ourselves to you to reign with you always. Apply to us all the work and triumph in your authority and your throne. We receive it with sincere and grateful hearts and we give it total claim to our spirits, souls, and bodies, our hearts, minds, and wills. We now bring the authority, rule, and dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ over our lives today over our homes, our families, our households, our vehicles, finances, over all our kingdoms, domains, and places of influence. We now bring the authority, rule, and dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fullness of the work of Christ against Satan, against Satan's kingdom, against every foul and unclean spirit, against every ruler, power, authority, and spiritual force of wickedness. Their every weapon, claim, and device. We bring the love of Christ against the spirit of hatred, asking that Christ's love would permeate every crevice of our lives and in our world, chasing away every last trace of darkness. We bring the river of life that's described in Revelation 22, the one that proceeds out from the throne of God and the Lamb against the spirits of death and destruction. Restore to us, O oh God, what has been lost or destroyed, and to help us to partner with you in establishing your kingdom on the earth. We now specifically name all foul and unclean spirits that we feel have been attacking us. We send these and all foul and unclean spirits bound to the throne of Christ, together with every backup and replacement, every weapon, claim, and device, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and in his name, we command the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the heads of those that refuse to obey. And we send them to judgment by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and in his name. We now bring the authority, rule, and dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fullness of the work of Christ against every foul power and black art, every hex, vex, and incantation, every spell, weave, web, veil, shroud, charm, and snare, against every ritual, sacrifice, and device, against every vow, dedication, and sacrifice, every word, judgment or curse written spoken or transferred to us we command them disarmed and broken by the authority of the lord jesus christ and in his name we now bring the authority rule and dominion of the lord jesus christ and the fullness of the work of christ against every witch cult and coven every channel of black arts that stands opposed to us we cut them off in the name of the lord and we send the glory of god to them to turn them in Jesus' name. We now bring the authority, rule, and dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ in the fullness of the work of Christ between us and all other human beings, their spirits, souls, and bodies, their sin, warfare, and their households. We bring the full work of Christ between us and those we name right now.
command their human spirits bound back to their bodies and their warfare bound to the throne of Christ in their lives. We bring the full work of Christ between us and our households and all people in the authority of Jesus Christ and in his name. Holy Spirit, we thank you for coming. We love you, we worship you, and we trust you. We honor you as Lord. We receive all the work and triumph and Pentecost through which you have come. You have clothed us with power from on high, sealed us in Christ, become our union with the Father and the Son, the spirit of truth in us, the life of God in us, our counselor, our comforter, our strength, and our guide. We honor you as Lord, and we fully give to you every aspect and dimension of our spirits, souls, and bodies, our hearts, minds, and wills, to be filled with you, to walk in step with you in all things. Fill us a fresh Holy Spirit. Restore our union with the Father and the Son. Lead us into all truth. Appoint us for all of our life and walk and calling. And lead us deeper into Jesus today. We receive you with sincere and grateful hearts. And we give you total claim to our lives. Heavenly Father, thank you for granting to us every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. We claim the riches in Christ Jesus over our lives today, over our homes, our families, our work, over all our kingdoms, domains, and areas of influence. We bring the blood of Christ once more over our spirits, souls, and bodies, over our hearts, minds, and wills. We put on the full armor of God, the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, shoes of the gospel, helmet of salvation. We take up the shield of faith and sword of the spirit, and we choose to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of your might to pray at all times in the spirit. Jesus, thank you for your angels. We summon them in the name of Jesus Christ and instruct them to destroy all that is raised against us, to establish your kingdom over us, to rebuild the shields and hedges of protection around us and our households, to minister to us your ministry. We ask you to send forth your spirit to raise up prayer and intercession for us. We now call forth the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout our homes, our households, kingdoms, domains, and areas of influence in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving all glory and honor and thanks to him. In Jesus' name, we stand together in agreement over all these things. Amen. Amen. And that's where we're going to leave things sermon-wise today. And I hope that as I prayed that you had an encounter with God, that you're feeling lighter, and that your hearts are full of something that you didn't have before hearing today's message, be it joy or peace, patience, kindness, 